had a cross section, 3,838 neutrons. It can capture neutrons. When it captures neutrons, basically isotope means what? Same number of protons, different number of neutrons. So when you catch one extra neutron, it becomes boron 11. But that boron 11 is not stable, it's artificial boron 11. Even before I see it blow, <coughs> it disintegrates into aqua particles, and then boron is not boron anymore, it becomes lithium, and then aqua particles are high energy radiation. This radiation is 8 to 10 micron path line. And because of that radiation, high energy radiation, anything between 8 to 10 micron, it can kill. Anything at all, it is healthy, human, other man. So it destroys the cell. And the cell side is 8 to 10 micron. So it's beauty. If you have boron inside the cell and up to the periphery of the cell wall, it's 8 to 10 micron, and alpha particle only travels up to there. So that means if it is in the tumor, it kills the tumor. If it is in the healthy one, it kills the healthy one. So then, how do you make this support of tumor only? And that's what the research is about. So you have to make the boron go to the tumor only, not in the healthy tissues. So, you know, the history there, but I'm not going to repeat all the history several things. That was discovered a long time ago, Kato Sack. And then in 1932, Chadwick, John Chadwick, discovered neutron. Until then, we didn't know anything about neutron. And soon after neutron was discovered in 1936 or so, the local in the basically Philadelphia which is called uh, the Philadelphia Institute, okay? And there, he showed that the neutron can be captured by this element called boron and also some other elements too. Now, this neutron cannot be captured by oxygen or nitrogen or carbon. So these, and the sulfur, these are the elements in our body made up of these elements. But none of them have this capacity to capture the neutron. So that is good in a way if you have a boron taken inside, only the boron that will go on, you can have this radiation coming out. But all the other elements, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, that means proteins and the DNA, none of them can be affected by <coughs> the neutron. If the neutron is a slow neutron, a capture neutron, so we call thermal neutron. Now, if it is a fast neutron, it can damage the tissues. So that's what the whole thing was about. In the Franklin Institute, this was done by Luca in Philadelphia. Now, here's the same thing which I talked about. Basically, what you can see, boron can capture neutrons, boron 11, which is artificial. As I said, 10 to the power of negative 12 seconds. So 10 to the power of 8 to 12 seconds in the life of this boron. It produces lithium, ion, as well as the alpha particles. Now, there are other elements by two that you Now you have near about 80% of the boron 11. That doesn't do anything. So it's a waste. So if you take that, if you want to be, the therapy should be more effective. You have to have an enriched boron. Now, enriched boron, the only way you can get the enriched boron is through nuclear reactors. But then we thought, let's try our method of making the enriched boron. So we used the nanoparticle. Basically, we took this compound, sandwich compound, and we basically used the ionic liquids and ended up making nano rubidium particles. So you can either make it in the ionic liquid, either a uh, the heavy one and stays at the bottom are fluidic nanoparticles. Either way, you can make it. And then if you characterize it, and then once you have this nanorubinium particles there, you can have a B B10 enriched diboron, which can pass on the decaborin, you can make the starting period be boron and enriched 99%. So 
It's not that simple. You need to do the chemistry before you do the medical research. So we ended up doing, since we are trained in such a way, we can do chemistry as well, nanoparticles. We made the nanoparticles, we made the whole automatic. Now, this is the best method, this is the only method right now you can make it with B10 enriched starting period for the cancer research. So when you publish that one in the General American Chemical Society, there's a lot of lots of lots of people were interested in and uh, they were asking us, how do you make this one so easily? Why do you get a patent? And then I said, well, patent is money making. But I want this one to be available to the entire world. Everybody can make it. Rather than just the patent, we make the money. No one else can touch it. Someone else make the profit. No. This this research has to be dedicated to the public. So we were doing that, and then we thought, let's do actual the testing and the how this will work. The one good thing about the boron is boron compound can be hooked on to any of the bioactive molecules. In early studies, there weren't many boron compounds available. Boron chemistry was not that much what it called expanded and well-known chemistry until 1974, which comes out of the for boron chemistry. So since then, the chemistry has gone beyond our imagination. Now, it is not what uh, how to build, but it is what to build. Previously, the question of how to make this one. Now we can make it. Just you name it, we can make any compound possible. So this is the glioblastoma one, which is the deadliest way to know. And this particular one, uh, here's the tumor. And uh, so far, there's no cure. Everybody knows it's failed. Every patient dies. And maximum, the, the survival, median survival is 18 months. And basically, treatment by surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, but no cure to be very nice. Well, what is neutron capture therapy then? As I discussed already, it's a bimodal therapy, cancer specific drug, then neutron, and that can capture boron 10 and also get linear one fifty seven also capture neutrons. Basically all of them can do short range cell chemical particles. And if it's a boron we call BNCT, get linear it called being TDNCT. So no one I would call it sort of boron neutron capture therapy. I can just say BNCT. We get a linear one TDNCT. Okay? And then not only brain tumor, and also melanoma and other ones too. Okay, here are the two comparatives uh, to the two therapies. Uh, 3,838 bond, a good cross section, 255,000 approximately. Again, as I said, an alpha reaction, and you have a alpha particles. In this case, the cluster chronic electrons, which are called OJ electrons, 10 to 39, under 40, and this one is under 10 micrometers, 8 to 10. Okay. 8 to 10, the micrometer, that is the size of the cell, and it can be a CT. Now, what makes boron the correct element? First of all, high cross section, non radioactive, can make it very localized, cannot affect it. any cell, neighboring cell which doesn't have the boron, only when there's boron, it's effective, otherwise it's not effective. And high linear energy transfer. And also, by the way, both dividing and non-dividing cells can be killed. That is interesting. Because most of the cancer cells are dividing cells. But there are tumor roots, by the way. I haven't started yet. The roots of the tumor are not dividing. Now, if the boron can go, even to the non-dividing cells, that means you can kill the roots of the tumor. That's the beauty about this. That's why it distinguishes from all the other therapies. Now, here it is, cell mechanism, and you can see slow neutron can come in, boron 10 will become boron 11, then immediately alpha particles and lithium 7. At length, 8 to 10 micron. It doesn't have to be, by the way, the nucleus, it could be anywhere in the cytoplasm. It can 
describe the entire system. 